They know that you're going to keep trying to get that acceptance and that love that they're purposely holding back from you so that you keep trying even more. And as a result, Are you at the place that you're not sure to block a person? Maybe you're at the place of like, I don't know if I can actually do it. Like, it just seems icky. It just seems like I shouldn't. It just seems rude. But I want to talk to you today of the question, is blocking a narcissist rude? Because a lot of times we think like, it's rude, it's awful. Like, like this is the person that I love. This is the person I've been with. Like, I just can't get to that place to block that person. Like, that's not me. A lot of times when I talk to people in one-on-ones and interactions with coaching, like there'll be this like this this rub or this like pushback of like, you know, I want to go no contact and, and I'll go no contact. I just don't want to actually block them. I don't want to actually either close the door, you know, sometimes because of hope, or I don't want to actually go to the place where I block them just because that just seems so mean. I've never blocked a person in my life. I've never had to block a person in my life. Well, you might be one of those people that have struggled with different questions like that and different thoughts. And I want to be able to address that today, going through some aspects about blocking, grooming, gaslighting, and to give you like an idea of like what's actually going on in the relationship and why it feels that hard to be able to block and to be able to go that direction. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. If you don't follow on all the other platforms, check out TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, follow us under Raw Motivations. Maybe you're listening today on the podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it. Share it with somebody because you never know when you share some of this to someone, you might be the dealer of hope in someone's life that's actually able to find their growth, their healing and change because they finally found the awareness of what they're actually dealing with. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Check us out on the podcast there. A lot of people have been asking about the wife's perspective. And I've mentioned a couple times, but I try to keep mentioning it just because I never know who's watching. But a lot of people have been asking, like, can we hear from the wife? Can we see a live? We haven't been able to put together a live, but we did. Be, we were able to put together a new podcast. And so we actually have a podcast that's been been out now for a week or so called Trauma, Drama, and Life. You can look it up on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But it's a, a place where we're actually interacting, talking, and sharing with you part of our life story. Part of all the stuff that's happened in our lives and explaining what we've gone through what we're dealing with now and to give you like a small slice of like hey this is what's actually happening and we touch base on like some trombone stuff some of our introduction is, is has been really good for a lot of people to hear and understand even aspects of like not going to counseling with a narcissist and the negative effects that it had on us when we did so we'd love to be able to have you engage with that and be able to be able to see just a little slice of our lives if you haven't had a chance download the narc app just type in narcapp.com, narcapp.com, stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. We've got all the information on there. We'd love for, be able to, for you to be able to join for accountability, for encouragement, for advice, for the weekly lives, for the monthly coaching, for discounted coaching sessions that can help you grow, heal, and change to get that clarity from the confusion. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to rawmotivations.com. We'd love to see you there. So is blocking a narcissist rude? Like, is it rude? A lot of times people think that, right? Now, the question is why? You know, a lot of times when we're thinking of blocking another person, we're like, it's rude. Like, because like, who would actually do that? Like, would you actually like shut someone out or like cut someone out of your life? Because a lot of times your only perspective of that is a healthy relationship, is a relationship that is normal. And so when that happens, you know, me think like, you know, I've always thought about blocking being rude in a normal relationship. Well, that's because in a normal, good, healthy, friendly relationship, it would be rude, but you're not really dealing with that, are you? You might be thinking that you're dealing with that, but as you start to compare the facts of the situation, as you start to compare the things that have been going on, you start to realize this ain't a normal relationship, okay? You see, toxic people a lot of times will end up blocking you. And this puts a different kind of idea of like, wait a second, I don't actually get what's going on. Like you just said, like blocking might not be rude, but then they're blocking me. Like maybe it is rude because I'm going to block them. Like, why did they block me? Like a lot of times people get confused with this. Okay. And they, and they start to wonder if like, wait a second, if I block, then maybe I'm the toxic person. Then I'm the one that's like trying to control the other person. Well, you see a toxic person will typically block you as an effort to avoid accountability or to control the situation. The difference behind it is the intention. Now, I know it's hard to know that person's intention, but that's because we're not coaching them. We're not helping them. We're working with you on a day-to-day -day basis of how do we work to grow, heal, and change. So the difference is your intention behind it. 
A narcissist will block you to control the narrative and to control you. Just like the idea of stonewalling or giving the silent treatment because they want you to come back and grovel at their feet and say, I'm sorry for the things that you did. And the narcissist says, great, now I can turn you into the person that I want you to be. A narcissist will block you to control you. You can block a narcissist in order to heal. That is the difference and that is the intention behind it. You're not blocking out of out of anger. You're not blocking out of meanness. You're not blocking to, to make them suffer. You're not blocking to control them. What you're blocking is you're blocking to control your sanity. It is a boundary. It is something that you're putting out there to say, hey, this person has been awful in my life, and not just in a, a friendly way, but in an abusive, emotional, mental, physical, sexual way that I need to make sure that I guard myself. You see, blocking is another form of a boundary. And when you look at boundaries from the wrong lens, you start to think that boundaries are these mean, awful walls or these awful prisons, but a boundary is actually protection to help you heal, grow, and change. You see, a lot of times you're conditioned to not block the narcissist. The narcissist early on conditions you to make sure that you don't actually stand up for yourself. They groom you. They get you to a place where you're locked in to not leaving. They get you to a place where you are stuck physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, where you are stuck with that person. And they start to lock you in to what we normally refer to as a trauma bond where there's intermittent reinforcement, where there's the highs and the lows, the idealization, the devaluation, back and forth, the push, the pull, the breadcrumbing, the ideas of like, wait a second, they love me, they don't love me, they love me, they don't love me, back and forth to confuse you to a place that you are stuck. Just like the Stockholm Syndrome, where you fall in love with the person that's abusing you, more or less, this is the aspect of you are trapped by the person that's abusing you, but you're holding on because every once in a while you get a tiny breadcrumb of love a tiny breadcrumb of acceptance, and you're like, wait a second, maybe this is actually what it's supposed to be. And they've conditioned you. A lot of times a narcissist conditions you by what is actually acceptable in the relationship. A lot of times they'll do this by triangulation of like, man, my past ex was all about drama. I hate drama. And then you know, hey, I can't be the course of drama or else I'm going to end up being like the ex. I can't be the person that that leaves because then I'll be like the ex. I can't be the person that gives up on him because every other person gave up on this person. Condition you. Narcissus also doesn't think that you'll leave. They don't. Why would you? They think that you are stuck with them because they've already orchestrated that. They've already got it to the place that you are stuck. They don't think you le you will leave. And as a result, when you get ready to leave or when you actually do it, the thought process will change of how dare you do that. If you've heard some of my videos before about the toaster illustration. Think of it, you come down to make toast. You get ready to put the toast in the toaster and the toaster looks back at you and says, no, I'm not going to do it. You'd be like, wait, what the heck? Like the toaster's talking to me for one, you know, I'm crazy. But then for two, like, like the idea is like, no, like you're meant to toast my toast. And Tosh was like, well, I don't really feel like it today. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's how a narcissist perceives you when you stand up for yourself and when you leave. How dare you leave? Your purpose, your whole purpose of being in my life is to serve me, is to bring me pleasure, is to make me look good, is to give me money, is to, and the list goes on and on. How dare you leave? Narcissist doesn't think you'll leave. Narcissist also doesn't think you have the confidence or the self-worth because they've already groomed that. They've already put you up on the pedestal, taken the pedestal away, dropped you down. You're crawling, trying to get back up to that pedestal, and they know you're going to keep trying. They know that you're going to keep trying to get that acceptance and that love that they're purposely holding back from you so that you keep trying even more. And as a result, you're not going to leave. They've already conditioned you not to block them and not to leave. They've conditioned you by the trombone, lock you into not the leaving. They've conditioned you with telling you what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. They've conditioned the aspect that they don't think that you're even going to leave. Okay, how dare you even leave? And they've also conditioned you by taking away your confidence and self-worth so you're not going to leave. Okay? They're also going to gaslight you. 
They're going to gaslight you into thinking that it is bad and it is rude and it is mean for you to leave. Then that's true in a normal, healthy, good relationship. That's how it, that's how it is. So they're going to take that. They're going to pervert it and they're going to say, hey, it is rude for you to leave. Okay. Idea here. If they're changing, why would you leave me because I'm changing? Why would you leave because I'm actually going to therapy? I mean, yes, I'm manipulating the therapist. Yes, I'm lying about even going to therapy. Yes, it's all a facade. But why would you do this? They'll gaslight you into thinking that there's change there when there's not. They'll gaslight you with the idea that you're abandoning them. Like, I can't believe you're leaving. How could you do this to me? How could you block me? Like, that is so rude. Like, you're finally, you're giving up on me? The real thing is they're giving up on them. Because they had years and countless chances to change. And at the end of the relationship, they're still not changing. All they are is manipulating. They'll gaslight you to think that it's bad because, hey, even though we're broken up, like, we could still be friends. Like, like, I don't love you anymore. I don't want to be with you. But, like, we can still interact. We could still be friends. Like, that's what healthy relationships do. That's what, that's what people do after. That's what exes do after is they can still be friends. From a narcissist, that's a bunch of lies. It's all about control and manipulating you. Let me tell you this to kind of wrap it up. It's rude of you to not block a narcissist because it's rude to yourself because it's sacrificing your self-worth and sacrificing your self-confidence. And you're saying, hey, I'm, a, I'm okay with this person coming back into my life and, and, and abusing me. It's really what it comes down to. Is blocking a narcissist rude? No. It's a healthy boundary that you have to put in to your life to heal, to grow, and to change. And if you don't block the narcissist, you end up doing yourself a disservice. And a lot of times you'll end up going back or letting them back into your life time and time again because they've groomed you to do that, because they've gaslit you to think that it's bad. Blocking narcissists is not a, is not a rude thing. It is a boundary for your protection, for your healing, and for your development.